Welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. This is your boy, Brother Vince, man. I'm back at you with another episode, man. And today, man, I want to share one of my special readings that I started reading, man. And I believe that if you're black, you should read this book. If you're white, you should read this book. Because to be honest to you, man, there's a lot of racial tension going on in this world. And most people, as like myself, don't understand why. You know, I grew up with the notion that um, slavery was like my total history. I didn't know that my history existed in the Bible. And no, this is not me becoming a Hebrew Israelite. So let me put that disclaimer out there real, 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 real quick. This is me, Brother Vince, a Christian, follower of Christ, not a Hebrew Israelite. Even though I know that spiritually we are Jews spiritually because of Jesus Christ, but we're not the Hebrew Israelites or the Israelites in the Bible. Let me go and make that clear. Let me get that out the way so that you have a true understanding as I guess I would say for the direction that I'm going into, you will have a true understanding of that. And that brings me to this book right here. No apology necessary by Reverend Earl Carter. Please go to his um channel. He has an actual YouTube. He's a great minister. He's a mentor to my pastor. He's a very great um, minister to listen to. I mean, the brother is sharp, you know, and the one thing I'll say about him real quick, um, he's part of the dying breed, the last of the dying breed. And what I mean by that is, you know, our elders, man. Unfortunately, we are losing a lot of our elders, so a lot of our history that we know or we may not know is disappearing with these people because um online they got rid they have gotten rid of books and different things and a lot of the material and the information that we are getting now to be honest to you is either watered down is either blackenized whitenized it's just jacked up and when it comes to true historical facts man it's it's becoming harder and harder to actually find that but what i will say is when you read this book, along with many other books out there, it actually helps you to understand that if you just take the time out and read your Bible, a lot of the information that you're seeking for, you searching for, you will find in the Bible. And that's what led me to wanting to do this show. Um, because last night after reading the chapter that I'm going to kind of read with y'all, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to read some of it it actually brought me to a place of repentance and forgiveness um, because I didn't realize that, you know, because me growing up black in America and um, I lived in South Carolina where there's a lot of slave ports and, um, you know, plantations and different things, it did put some kind of inferiority in my heart to where, you know, to a certain degree, I did feel a little bit of, man, um, why does it seem like, you know, where I'm from, black folks are always on the struggle, always on the rise, trying to overcome certain barriers that, uh, that seem like, um, we couldn't overcome. And it wasn't because of racial oppression, because I have a lot of great white friends from South Carolina that I grew up with, but a lot of it was because it seemed like there was something spiritual going on that kept us with this crab in the bucket slave mindset that I know um, exists where I'm from. And I'm just praying and believing that God will break that spirit off the minds of the people where I'm from, because with having that slave mindset, a lot of times people believe that the white man is solely responsible for um, why we can't progress. And that's not necessarily true. And I'm saying that because I'm a person who came from an area called Plantersville. And if you know the history of Plantersville, this is where most of the slaves um actually lived at. And I grew up in that area, man. And very much so, it's a place where the poverty line, I would say, is very, is, is, is there. And that's not to say they aren't wealthy people there. That's not to say they aren't successful people there. But it's just one of those areas to where, you know, you see a lot of the old time things going on and you see where people haven't truly progressed. That's not to say they aren't people like myself and many others who have um, who didn't leave. A lot of us did leave and a lot of us did do better things, but it had nothing to do with the white man. It was all about choice and decisions that we made in life that um, allowed us to be where we went and where we are. So um, 
you know, that's pretty much a little bit about that. Um, so I'm going to go into this book and I'm going to read some things, man, to kind of explain to you who is responsible for slavery. Because growing up, I didn't understand why black folks were in slavery. It was one of the questions that I always had. Like, I always wanted to know why. What historical evidence did we have or have that can explain slavery to us? Because it seems to be the very topic that um many folks talk about today. Many folks are, you know, still um upset about, you know, and different things like that. But nobody outside of, I guess I would say Christians really know, or there are people out there that do know, but they, you know, are afraid to say. And I believe that this information is important because if people would teach and talk about it, not from the perspective of, oh, let's go drudge it up and, um, you know, put people back in bondage. No, I, I believe that, um, the truth will set you free and, Last night, the truth did set me free and it took the spirit, the Holy Spirit to kind of help. It took the Holy Spirit to help me see that I had this in me because I'm going to be honest with you. I go to church. Um, I actually love white folks. Don't have no problems, no issue with them. Don't feel like they're responsible for anything that happened in my life. But there still was a slight bit of, you know, hatred or inferiority in my heart because of just my lack of understanding of who was responsible for slavery. And what I found out through this book was God is solely responsible for it. If people want to go back and reference black folks in the Bible, you do have some that were Israelites, but we were more so in the Bible time. We were more so Egyptians and we were Ethiopians amongst other things in the Bible. And because of idolatry, we were enslaved. Yes, God is responsible for that. Why? Because of our disobedience. But one of the things that I love that Dr. Carter said in this book, I thank God for the ships. And I'm saying that as a decoration. I thank God for the ships because had we been still stuck in Africa, most of us will be those people that we see that are still living behind time, you know, half naked in the woods, you know, worshiping idols and different things. The reason why those folks are still like that is because of their disobedience to God. God told us in the Old Testament, um, if we go back to the Ten Commandments, um, he talks about us not worshiping no other, um, worshiping no other God. And it's so crazy, ironic that if you look at social media, if you look at of um, if you look at hip hop and different things like that, especially um, anything that has anything to do with black folks, the one things that you are seeing us going back to, a lot of people open up and saying they're going into spirituality. So you have a lot of sorcery, witchcraft, um, idol, um, idol worshiping, um, black folks worshiping black folks, which is idolatry. Um, all these things are happening. These are pretty much the very same things that happened in the old Testament that led to us as black folks being enslaved. Now I'm going to put out another um, disclaimer. We weren't the only society that were enslaved. And in actuality, if black folks really want to know the Egyptians were the ones who enslaved the Israelites. So if we got people out there saying that, that they were Israelites, then I think what they have to know is, bro, we were enslaving each other. And if you go back and look at Africa, if you were able to go, you'll see that that still exists. Even think about it in the sense of being in the ghetto. Don't we see that we always had this inner hatred towards one another? Like I remember growing up and because I grew up in Plantersville, anybody who grew up in Oakland, Dunbar, Lanes Creek, or depending on what part of Georgetown they were in, we didn't really associate with them. We had this inner hatred to where it was like a rivalry thing that went on. And it was more so tribal because if you weren't with my set, then I don't deal with your set. Almost like Bloods and Crips, you know, folk and, you know, all the other, you know, gangs that are out there. Like, they just don't deal with each other, especially, especially when it's, you know, black, you know, versus, you know, black. And that's not to say that, you know, they're black versus Mexican, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the one thing I think people have to understand with all of this rivalry, 
especially when we are all a part of the same race, which is the human race. Anytime we beef with one another, that's brother on brother, because if God is the father of us all and he created us all in his likeness and image, and yet we fight amongst ourselves, that goes back to Cain and Abel, you know, which is where, you know, the brother versus brothers thing started. So it's a lot of historical things that I believe that people need to kind of, you know, um, help people understand because it's a lot of things that go on in this world that we are clueless about and we have no understanding about. And the reason being is because the devil, which is the God of this world, have blinded the minds of people so bad to where even if you tell them truth, they won't be able to receive it because their mind has been blinded. And that's another thing that God has allowed because when people choose not to follow him, then they choose not to walk in life. So that's what it is. So I'm going to start on page 40 and of this book, no apology necessary. And on page 40, I'm going to start where it says, who's really to blame. This was all I could take. So I stood up and said, brothers, we blame the white man for everything. They knew I was a preacher. So they listened to me respectfully, but our real problem is with God not with the white man that got their attention. All eyes were on me as they waited to hear how I would explain this outrageous statement. We were in Egypt. I continue in the power in power for 3000 years. We are indeed the descendants of Egyptians. We are scientists and inventors and educators and writers. Well, they like that because whenever you talk about Blacks being descendants of great of the great civilization of ancient Egypt, you get the atten- you get the you get our attention because we have been put down so much and so long. Whenever we hear anything that gives us credibility or validation, we perk up. Then I add it, but that also means we were the first slave masters. Wow, we were the first slave masters. We enslaved Israel for four hundred years. Now they were surprised. See, we were surprised. I know some of y'all are being surprised to hear this. We were on top, but now we're not because we picked a fight with God. So this is what happened, and this is why black folks are enslaved. We, our, our ancestors picked the wrong fight. We were on top, but now we are not. But now we're not because we pick a fight with God. Nine day were very surprised. Then I noticed a Bible on the counter, so I picked it up. Even with the is, is um Islamic influence in the black community, most blacks still feared and respect the Bible. I started reading some of the verses from Isaiah 19. So if you want to know where to go, go to Isaiah 19. That spoke about God's judgment of Egypt because of his idolatry, because of witchcraft and sorcery. This is what we have going on. I see a lot of black women nowadays. They read tarot cards. They're into burning sage. Um, they're into crystals. I mean, all these different things. This is the stuff that when the Egyptians were enslaved, this is the stuff that they were doing in. And it's to no surprise that now, if you look into the black culture, this is all you see going on, especially amongst black women or the transgender people you know you see a lot of them into this i know because i have a family member who is a transgender and this is what i see him into um i talked about the idol um the idols um we worship in africa then i showed them the first mention of slavery which is in isaiah 19 verse 4 and the egyptians will i give over into the hand of a cruel lord and the fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. So God is the reason why we in slavery. He gave us over to what he called a cruel Lord. They cried in disbelief. You mean to say that God permitted that to happen? So I responded, yes, because he died. He did it before with the, with Israel and any other nation who turned from him. But the real bomb dropped when I got to the ships. I flipped to Ezekiel 30 and read, In that day shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make the careless Egyptians afraid. 
and great pain shall come upon them as in the day of Egypt, for lo, it cometh, verse 9. So you can go find that in Ezekiel, the 30th chapter, that's verse 9. The Lord sent ships to pick us up. I sat quietly waiting for everyone, everything to sink in. He, ra um, he raised up the white men to bring the ships to pick us up and enslave us. Now there was an absolute silence in the barbershop. One of the men there was in the military and wanted to see where I was reading from. When I showed him, he confirmed to everyone, it's in there, he said. So I decided to continue in Ezekiel. Though they were shot, their missing piece of the pluser had to be added. The, vexa um, the vexated heart of the white man. I now want to tell you why the white man can't stand us, I announced. Then I read Ezekiel 32 and 9. I will also vex the heart of many people when I shall bring thy destruction upon the nations into the country where thou has not known. God vexed the heart, the white man's heart against us, the black race. I said soberly, his heart is irritated at us. Well, that was it. This was the knockout punch. You can hear the parking lot, the parking meter ticking outdoors. So right now we about to read that part called absolute truth. So when I finished, I sat down. Everyone was silent. Then the young man sitting next to me said quietly, I knew something was wrong. He said he reasoned that he said he reasoned that they must have that we must have done something wrong to be at the bottom of the totem pole, economically script as we are. But he had never heard the truth before. And this is the problem that I had suffered from. And I was trying to figure out why we was on the bottom. I, I just had no understanding of why. But last night when I read this, this helped me to understand why is it that economically we're at the bottom. That doesn't mean we have to remain there because any man who's in Christ, he's a new creature, creature, creation. But for the most part, this is why black folks are in poverty. This is why we're in the predicament that we're in. Because anytime we choose to go against the God of the Bible, he allows these type of things to happen to us, not just us as black folks, but to any group of people that are not willing to obey them. If you look at each culture, there's a group of people that are suffering, that are naked, that are homeless, that are out there. And we can't understand why, even though we have all these, you know, make it with foundation and all these organizations that's constantly, you know, pouring money out into the communities to help these people. This is why it's like that. Even for most of us as veterans, a lot of veterans are out there suffering from the same thing because most of us, when we went into the military, we became adulterous because why? We started worshiping idols, images, things. Think about the, you know, the, 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 a lot of our, you know, um, unit patches and different things, man. A lot of that stuff is idolatry. And I've seen people tattoo these things on themselves. I've seen people take this stuff to heart. Think about the serpent. Don't tread on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, just think about all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of symbolism and things that happened in the military that made us idolatrous. And we are trying to figure out why we are suffering. You know, most of us idolize the fact that we are veterans. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing to, you know, recognize that, okay, we are veteran, but this is another thing when that becomes who you are and that's all you live, breathe, and think. And also, um, let me go back to the book. Most most men in the black barbershop can get can get rather philosophical. I call them pseudo Aristotle, Plato's, and Arepidize. They're in spouse a perspective of relative truth in these philosophies and radical revolutionaries. I came in with an absolute and my absolute truth about I mean brought about silence, but I felt as if I could hear the conversations taking place inside of them. That's why I believe God did some healing in that barber shop that day. Prophecy fulfilled. It was proven to me that many prophecies were fulfilled through sending the, um, the sending of slave ships. Ezekiel 30 and 9 shows that God sent the ships. It's worth quoting again. In that day shall messages go forth from me in ships to make 
the careless Egyptians afraid and great pain shall come upon them as in the day of Egypt for lo, it cometh. Other prophecies against idolatry were also fulfilled through the enslavement of blacks. Those spoken specifically against Israel, God spoke judgment in Deuteronomy 28 upon any who would disobey his commands and go after other gods to serve them. Verse 14, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commands and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 15. We quench when we hear about curses. The word curse shakes people up, and it ought to. God said Israel would be cursed everywhere they went. Verse 16. And that he would send pestilence and diseases. Verse 22. The heavens would be like brass. Verse 23. They would be removed into the kingdom, um, into all the kingdoms of the earth. Verse 25, they would begot sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Verse 41, look at Africa today. Missionaries and medical personnel are constantly serving our people there due to pestilence and disease. The heavens are like brass in many areas because of severe droughts. We as people have been scattered over the whole world. The slave families were separated. The children were sold, and the curse followed the black man into the ships. Betrayal. And this is, um, I, and I have two more parts that I'm going to read, and then I'm going to stop there, because I want you to go get this book for yourself um, at Errol Carter Ministry. So I'm not going to read this whole book, because legally, I can't do that. So please go to Errol Carter Ministry and get this book. The Portuguese, Dutch, French, Swedish, Danes, Perusians, Arabs, and Spaniards could never have been successful, I mean, could never have succeeded in capturing the Africans if the Africans had not, if the Africans had been unified, but they weren't. Historian Jeffrey Stewart tells us, it's a myth that most Africans who become slaves in America were captured by Egyptian in slave raids. Most of the Africans who became slaves were sold into slavery by other Africans. This is the part of history that they don't talk about. We were sold into slaves by other Africans. African kings and tribal chiefs sold their prisoners of war from other tribes to the slave trade. They gave them the resources necessary to maintain the prisoners. They profited as well. Some slave, um, some trade, sl um, traded slaves for firearms, which only led to more tribal wars and more opportunity for slave traders. It also shows I also showed them in a barbershop that day how this this unity was part of our curse because of our adultery. So this is the reason why we have black on black issues. In the Bible, it says in Isaiah 19 and 2, Isaiah 19 and 2, and I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptian and they should fight everyone against his brothers and everyone against his neighbor city against city and kingdom against kingdom. This is the reason why we have the inner fighting and the Egyptians. I will give over into the hand of a crew Lord Isaiah 19 for a, the slave ship. Slavery was so cruel that many blacks died on, died on the way to the ship. The path were so bloody and littered with bodies that I mean, bodies, they had to cut new trails. Wow. Those who made it to the slave ship were stacked like sardines. Reverend John Newton, born 1972, um, born 1725, died in 1807. The famous slave trader was later converted to Christ and wrote the great spiritual anthem, Amazing Grace, wrote, Their lodging rooms below the deck are sometimes more than five feet high and sometimes less and the heights and this height is divided towards the middle from the slave lies in two rows, one above the others on each side of the ship close to each other, like books upon a shelf. I have known them so close that the shelves would not easily contain one more. The poor, the poor creature does cramp and likewise an iron for the most part, which, 
makes it difficult for them to turn or move or attempt to rise or lie down without hurting themselves or each other. Every morning, perhaps more instance than one or more found of the living and the dead frightened together. Slaves would lay together, I mean, would have to lay on hardwood for six to ten weeks. Often their skin and their elbows and their knees became worn to the bone, especially when weathers were rough. The sharks will follow the ships from the coast of Africa all the way to United States to the United States and other destinations because of the regular meals, because of their regular meals. It was common practice to throw overboard anyone with symptoms of smallpox. Slaves were thrown into the sea to reduce the weight of the ship, and many jumped overboard to end their misery. The greatest threat to the life of a slave was disease, which spread quickly in tight quarters. These quarters were described by a British surgeon as so covered with blood and mucus, which proceeded from them in consequence of flux, dysteria. This is resembled as a slaughterhouse. What the um what a description of the following verse. The Lord should smite thee with consumption and with fevers and with information. Deuteronomy twenty eight twenty two. So this is actually what happened. And people would ask, why would God do that? What well, a question you would have to ask, why would he allow his son to die for our sins? If God would allow his son to die for our sins, then he would allow slavery too. People don't understand God. He doesn't think like a person. He's a creator. And if you know anything about being a creator, it's just like when you were sitting there as a kid and you were trying to draw something and you realized that what you were drawing wasn't perfect. You didn't like the picture. So you ended up erasing it, balling it up, throwing it away. Well, it's the same way with God. He's a creator. He's able to do whatever he want to do because he creates. But he loved us so much that he gave his one and only begotten son, saying, whomever shall believe shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So he gave us a, a, a contingency plan because the word says slain was the land before the foundation of the world. So God had already put in place what he was going to do. But the major problem is most people don't understand that we suffer from decisions that ancestors and people before us made so it's not the white man's fault as to why we're why we suffer god was the reason why because of adultery but just take from all of that and just sit here and think about it for a second let it go it's it's just time to let it go black and whites alone white people yeah god vexed the heart caused you to be irritated with black folks and it's not y'all specifically, but, you know, those who ancestors were slave traders and et cetera, et cetera. The Lord allowed that to happen for a reason. And I thank God for what he allowed to happen because I, as an African-American male, which I don't like to call myself because I believe that I'm an American because I never grew up in Africa. I don't have folks in Africa. My folks are from South Carolina. Um, the Lord was the reason why it happened. And. He's responsible for it, but I don't hold that against God because why I understand as a Christian, as a believer in Jesus Christ, I understand why he did it because he so loved the world. He gave, he allowed, he allowed it to happen for a reason. And that reason was so that we as believers can be where we at right now on the other side of his grace and his mercy. Because I believe it was grace and mercy that God allowed us to have, knowing that he could have done what he did in the days of Noah, when he destroyed the whole world and only saved eight people. Like people forget about what God did when he did that. And for those same people to turn around and to just disrespect him blatantly in his face and turn to idolatry, witchcraft, sorcery, and all that other stuff, which is what we see people doing now, I get it. Because it's just like a parent, man. I don't like to be disrespected by my child. And if we are God's children and we constantly disrespect him, how do you expect him to react? You know what I'm saying? I've heard parents when I was growing up say, man, I brought you in this world. I'll take you out. Well, that's how God is, man. He, he created us and he'll take us out. 
For the Bible says, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So God is offering that to you today. So if you're not saved, I pray that after hearing this, I pray that you would be saved. If you don't believe in God, I pray after hearing this, picking up this book, going to Reverend Earl Carter or Bishop Earl Carter or Earl Carter Ministry and getting that book and reading it, I pray that you would be set free. Because whomever the sun set free is truly free indeed. I pray that you would be free. I pray that you would be healed. So before I close, I, I'll go through a little prayer. Heavenly Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just thank you, Father God, for the truth that the listeners just heard, Lord. And we know, Father God, the truth to set us free, Lord. And that your word says, whomever the sun set free is truly free indeed, Lord. So I thank you for freeing some people on the day, Lord. I know it was a shocker for most people to hear the truth about what happened during slavery. I was shocked, Lord. I was shocked to hear why we were in slavery, Lord. But I understand, Lord, because, Lord, now I'm being on this side of the river, Lord. I understand that, Lord, it was your will for it to happen, Lord, because you do whatever it takes to save us, Lord. You allow your son to die for our sins in order for us to be saved, Lord. So, Lord, it's the same thing when, when we were, you know, as a people um, into idolatry, Lord. And, Lord, I repent on the behalf of my ancestors and those who done the foolishness that they did, Lord, that caused us to be in slavery, Lord. I repent, Father God, just asking that you forgive us, Lord, for what they done, Lord, for their I, the, uh, for their I, um, idol worshiping, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you will forgive us, Lord, for any idols that we have set up in our time, Lord. Rather it be, Father God, us, you know, considering ourselves to be more important than others by considering our, our skin color making us more important because of me growing up black or that person growing up white, Lord. Forgive us for that idolatry, Lord. Forgive us for turning to, Father God, the, the unclean thing. You said, touch not the unclean thing you receive us unto you, Lord. Sometimes the unclean thing may be music, Lord. That sometimes the unclean thing may be movies, Lord. Sometimes that unclean thing may be, Father God, just whatever it is, Father God, that causes us to, you know, um, rise up against you or to, Lord, put you on the back burner because of a decision we made. Some people made a decision to become a Freemasonry, Lord, Mason, Lord. I pray that you were freedom from that, Lord. Some people became a sorority and a fraternity member, Lord. I pray that you were freedom from that, Lord. I just pray that, Lord, you would have mercy on our soul for all the things that folks have done, Lord. Because some of these same things that they did back then, Lord, your people are doing it now, Lord. But, Lord, I know that you came to set the captive free. So I just believe you for their freedom. And I thank you for it being done now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This has been another episode with your boy, Brother Vince. Like, share, subscribe to this channel. Go support Mr. Earl Carter, Bishop Earl Carter, as I call him. Go support him. Drop some ducats in his pocket. You know, um, bless the man of God for what he did, man, because God still used men today to do his work, just like he did. Go check out. EX Ministries, go get the color of blood because that's a great video. And down below, I'm going to put links to those organizations so you can go support those great men of God. Please go out there and support these men of God because God do have some people out there that speak in truth that will bless your life like they bless my life. This has been another episode of Vet Talk again. This is your boy, Brother Vince. I'm out.